Good morning, everyone. Namaste. Respected Chief Guest, Professor Josie, member of the National Planning Commin Commission, respected secretaries, respected joint secretaries of the Government of Nepal, directors general of the Departments of Health, Agriculture, and Livestock, distinguished professionals and associates, development partners and distinguished guests, namaste, good morning, and welcome to this year's symposium. It is my pleasure to be here today to offer opening remarks to this distinguished group and to participate in the scientific symposium, exploring the links between agriculture, nutrition, and health, top development priorities for the government of Nepal and the government of the United States. This symposium embodies the important ideals that our two governments share in these sectors, including a multi-sectoral approach to improving nutrition and food security, and a commitment to le linking research, policy, and programmatic interventions. And we know that these ideals are shared not only by governments, but by many of the individuals here today. We have dedicated professional efforts to improving nutrition, health, and food security in Nepal and around the world. Since this symposium's inception five years ago, interest in the event has grown remarkably. As you've seen, this event has, the participation has grown threefold, and it's really the evidence of the commitment of people like you who care deeply about the work you do and about the people it impacts in our communities and really all over um, Nepal. I would like to recognize some of the organizations that have made this year's symp symposium possible. So thank you for your blood, sweat, and tears. Um, the Government of Nepal, the Institute of Medicine, and the Nutrition Innovation Lab Partners, as well as the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, which we are excited to welcome as a new partner this year, and we hope you will continue to participate in outer years. USAID is proud to continue our support of this year's symposium, and we hope that it will provide an opportunity for policymakers, program implementers, academics, and researchers to learn from each other, to contribute to the evidence base around nutrition and food security, and to inform policy and programming. Nepal has been a world leader in evidence-based multi-sectoral nutrition programming. And I can tell you that per personally, I've been wanting to come to Nepal, the Nepal USAID mission for four years. I'm finally here, but it's really of all of the global research that you've disseminated across in many countries that are following your lead. An early riser in the scaling up nutrition movement, Nepal's leadership resulted in one of the world's fastest reductions in stunting over the past 15 years. Now, the government of Nepal continues to lead the way with the country's second multi sectoral nutrition plan, which is being developed by seven ministries. I want to highlight that seven ministries under the coordination of the National Planning Commission and which incorporates the latest evidence and programmatic experience to provide a framework to further improve the nutritional status of Nepali citizens. In addition to leading a multi-sectoral nutrition programming, Nepal has been a leader in integrating public health science into national policies and programs, resulting in some of the most compelling evidence-based programs in the world. Nepal has a long history of exporting these successful programs to contribute to the global evidence. Examples include evidence around vitamin A and iron folic acid supplementation, chlorhexidine, and the addition of zinc to oral rehydration therapy. In addition, in both the 2008 and 2013, the findings of the Lancet series on nutrition were informed in part by research conducted in Nepal. USAID is proud to be one of the donors, along with the EU, the World Bank, and others, supporting the government of Nepal's stake its long commitment to investing in nutrition. And we're proud to contribute to its work under the multi-sectoral nutrition plan throughout the, through the Red Book, as well as throughout Suhara, Kisan, Sabal, and Pahal projects 
This is an exciting time for nutrition globally, as many around the world are finally speaking the same language and talking about the multifaceted causes and consequences of insecurity and malnutrition. However, challenges do remain, which is why we're all here today. As we move into the next phase of programming, it is vital that we continue to invest in cutting age research, generate strong empirical evidence, and ensure that this evidence is accurately translated into policy and implementation. At the same time, experience from existing programs must inform the direction of future research and implementation. In Nepal, we have made tremendous progress, but the nutrition problems that persist are complex. And that brings us to the purpose of this symposium. For all of us, across all of our varied disciplines and areas of expertise, we need to think together about what the next steps are as a collaborative, as a cohesive group. How can we build our existing knowledge and programming to continue rapid and sustained progress? For example, although we had great successes in multi-sectoral nutrition programming, Further work in implementation science can help us understand how to make this programming even more impactful. Stunting, acute malnutrition, and anemia remain a concern in Nepal, especially among certain populations, and we see inequalities between social groups, regions, and, this, and sexes. To continue to make progress, we must better understand how to reach these marginalized people. How do we bring closer together these divides? Stunting, uh, we also need to better understand the impact of widespread, widespread out-migration on households, the agricultural workforce, and nutritional status. Similarly, in many areas of Nepal, we see high levels of knowledge about healthy practices, but actual behavior change has not always followed. And this, I think, for me, is one of the hardest things to do. Um, I've seen this in many countries. Behavior change is really, for me, tremendous work, but very difficult um, to bring to fruition. We need to better understand the social and cultural norms that are barriers to better nutrition, as well as how to change these norms. <coughs> Another area where we enhance our impact is through improving our understanding of the biological mechanisms that affect nutritional status. In a recent study, 95% of the women tested in one district in Nepal had been exposed to aflatoxins. USAID is pleased to be supporting some research on my mycotoxins, but much more work is needed in Nepal and around the world. And finally, while we continue to invest in effective interventions that can improve the health and nutrition of today's infants and children, we also need to continue to work towards the improvement of longer-term food systems res with respect to production, quality, year-round diversity, affordability, and safe and adequate consumption. And these few things I've mentioned are only the beginning of our possible areas of learning. In fact, the opportunities for partnership and collaboration in this room are truly remarkable. So let's challenge ourselves to take advantage of these three days to learn as much as we can from each other and to think about how we can collectively contribute to the future of research policy and implementation in Nepal around the world. I wish you all the best over the next three days, and I look forward to seeing the results of your efforts and interactions, and I look forward to working with you over the next four years or more, maybe. Thank you.